You're waking up. Of course you are. I knew you would. Uh, slowly. No need to rush. You've got all the time in the world. You're understandably disoriented. Of course you are after what you've been through. Just rest easy for a little while. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Um, over here? Oh, <laughs> silly me. Your spectacles are missing. There you go. That's more like it. Uh, uh, uh. What did I say about getting up? It's for your own good, after all. Set to back down. That's more like it. Now then, you seem confused about where we are. Well, that makes sense. I mean, this area was never a part of your cleaning duties. We're in the dungeon, or what used to serve as a dungeon. Now it's more of a derelict storage room. Uh, well, why, thank you. I do think I've put a nice spin on the place. After all, all of this took a bit of figuring out, I mean... It's not every day that I bring someone back to life. I needed a place to work out some of the missteps along the way. You know what they say, I mean, you have to break a few eggs to make an omelette. Don't look so frightened. It's not like it ever hurt you, silly. Certainly not after what I've gone through. All the trouble it took to bring you back. What's that? Uh, who am I? Oh, my, I mean. It seems that things are a little more scrambled up there than I thought. Oh well, guess we'll just have to start over. Then I suppose, uh, introductions are in order. I'm Minerva, though feel free to call me Min. I am the head maid of the House of Erling. I've worked here for the past five years, and, well, up until recently, I supposed I ought to die here. And, well, as for you, you never did tell me what your title around here was. Oh, I suppose you could be considered a jack-of-all-trades. Master of most, I should say. There never seemed to be anything that you couldn't do. Aside from stay alive, of course. But that was really just a hiccup. Easily fixed. How did I go about it? Well, since you can't recall anything, I guess that would be confusing. The lord and lady of the house are not people who I'd call clever with their money. Certainly they've got an eye for things, I mean, after all. They're the ones I got all of this equipment from. All of the burners and beakers a girl could ever dream of. Not to mention all the books on the occult. That said, I never could put the pieces together. Poor things. Just couldn't figure out how to make anything of it. Really, all that money is just wasted on them. So I figured they probably wouldn't mind if I borrowed some things. Just a little bit here and there, I mean, they never did read the books or use any of the materials after all. Once I'd ascertained that, I mean, it was easy. All I had to do was take things one by one. Of course, in the beginning, I could simply just read the books while I did my daily chores. It's not as though they cared to watch me work. Yes, of course. Well, things were just terrible after you passed away. And such an unsightly death, too. I mean, I really did try and talk them out of having you scrub the gargoyles on top of the roof. After all, it's not like they won't just get dirty again the next time a bird decides to move in. But they insisted. Such a nasty fall. And then it was just over. They didn't even wear black. Like it was nothing. They had you buried before the day was out. And I just couldn't shake the feeling, I mean... It was so... unfair. You worked here for so long. You helped them with everything. Helped all of us. And that's the thanks they gave you. 
After that, it only took me a few days to figure it out. I mean, once I saw the book on necromancy, I put two and two together. After all, if they really didn't care, there's no way they would notice. Honestly, digging you up was the hardest part. Thankfully, I was able to wait till it was laundry day and borrow the clothing of one of the grounds workers, so as not to stir up suspicion if my clothes became muddy. Really, even in death you are helpful. You weren't buried very deep at all. That's what convinced me. No doubt you wanted to come back too. And well, the rest is ancient history. It's freezing down here, so you stayed in all right condition while I practice. Oh, that's Biscuit, of course. Do, do you remember him at all? You do? Well, that's a wonderful sign. I mean, even if you've lost a good bit of your memory, some of it is intact. I managed to resurrect the lady's ratty dog after he passed away last year. He's much nicer now. I suspect it was her treatment of him that made him such a grouch in the first place. Isn't that right, Biscuit? Hmm, he's a bit odd, but he's such a good boy. Really, it was his success that made me feel certain I was ready. I mean, if he could come back all right after being gone for so long, surely I could do the same with you. Why do you look so upset? Don't tell me you're unhappy. Do you feel unwell? No? See then, isn't that better? Sure, you aren't alive any longer, but that's not so bad, is it? Look, Biscuit. Sure, sometimes his tail falls off and I just have to stitch it back on, but he's happier than I've ever seen him. He's better now. Just like you are. Speaking of which, uh, could you hold out your arm for me? I know you don't like being constrained this way, but uh, I'll need to leave you like it for a while. After all, this is my first time bringing back a human. I mean, I have to be certain there's no unfortunate side effects. And wiggle your fingers? Excellent. Everything seems to be in working order then. I had to do a little bit of reassembling. After all, you hit the fence pretty hard. But, uh, all that appears to have gone swimmingly if I do say so myself. Come on now. Why do you seem so sad? This is a good thing. For the both of us, right? My plan? Uh, I guess... That was a while ago, so if you don't remember me, you're bound not to remember that. Well, a very long time ago, you asked me the same question, and I never did have an answer for you. What's my plan for this life of mine? There never was anything. Truly, the days passed by with each one precisely the same. Like flipping through a book of just blank pages. My family's worked for the Earlings as long as anyone can recall. I mean, it was the only thing I could ever do. And then you arrived. And everything was different. More interesting. More alive. You weren't like me. Like anyone else. You were skilled. Clever. It was so obvious that there was something better waiting for you. Apparently, you were only working to save enough money to run off and join the circus. And I mean, once you confessed to that, I couldn't help but pester you for the details regarding what you do. What a life like that might be like. It was unspeakably reckless. Thrilling. And so, when you asked me what my plan was, I was truly content to just simply watch you for the rest of my days. You were my favorite observation subject. Like you were someone who'd wandered right off the pages of a fairy tale and into this bleak little world. And then you had to go do something so... irritating, like die. So naturally, I had to change course. I mean, I wasn't going to leave you there in that unmarked plot. I have to thank you, after all. Everything was so... 
empty before you. Not anymore, though. Now, it's all become so much clearer. Isn't it obvious? I'll get you your dream, of course. After all, it's not like we've been dealt a fair hand. I'm just leveling the playing field. I mean, you can't blame me. The rich play checkers, and so the poor must play chess to get ahead, right? I mean, it was you that told me that anything is possible in this life. And apparently, that extends to death as well. I haven't decided exactly what I'll do with the Lord and Lady yet. After all, they're not my priority. That's you, silly. Once you rest for a few days and we ensure that you're not in any danger, we can go from there. <laughs> Don't squirm around so much. I won't be gone for long. I've just got to finish my duties for the day. And then I'll return with something for you to eat. Hmm. Yeah, you do still need to. Biscuit does. Oh, and of course, he'll be here to keep you company. Wouldn't do to have him following me around all day. And if you start to feel impatient, well, just remember, we've got all the time in the world. After all, death's just a hollow threat now, right? Okay, sit tight then, darling. I'll return for you soon. <laughs>